Greetings. As a follow on to the previous video, this one takes a look at some of the views from space of a huge bushfire in New South Wales on 12th of February. By early on 13th of February, a total of 32 homes and 76 outbuildings had been destroyed in fires, 23 of those consumed by a massive fire which was named the Sir Ivan Fire near Dunedoo, which burned, had burned through 54,700 hectares uh, by today, the 15th of February. It had a fire edge of 200 kilometers long on the 12th and a plume that exploded 14 kilometers high into the atmosphere. This excellent picture by Alex Ellinghausen shows the Sir Ivan fire on 12th of February. Bear in mind that this plume at this time is likely over 10 kilometers high, so well higher than Mount Everest. The sooty gray smoke can be seen down low, but at a certain altitude the smoke turns white. This is because condensation has occurred, indicating that the plume has actually formed a cloud. On the top, a huge Peleus cap cloud can be seen, caused by the massive updraft, lifting a stable layer to its condensation level. This was a developing pyrocumulonimbus, a fire-triggered thunderstorm. The plume tilts to the east in the strengthening westerly flow ahead of the cold change. Here are the Bureau of Meteorology surface pressure charts, which I'm putting in just to show that this event was associated with a cold front moving north across New South Wales through the day. I mention this because one of the interesting things we'll look at is how the cold front affects the fire as viewed from space and with the weather radar. These were the predicted surface winds from the Bureau's uh, numerical prediction model. The cold front is often known as the change or cold change in Australia, partly because unlike a typical cold front, it is often, but not always, a dry event as the dry Australian air mass inhibits rainfall development. During the change, the wind direction quickly changes, in this case from a dry west-northwesterlies flowing out of the dry interior to southwesterlies. The change often drops the temperature rapidly in a matter of minutes with no rain or cloud. This change in winds has a large impact on the fire. Okay, that's enough of the model background. Let's get back to reality and look at some satellite images and movies. First, the broad view. This is the infrared imagery, which tells us the temperature of the clouds, but if there are no clouds, it, then it shows the surface temperature. The greens, yellows, and reds are clouds, whereas the blues and pinks are the surface, with the pinks being hotter. You can see a big swath of green and yellow moving northeast across New South Wales, marking the cool clouds above the cold change. And look at those pinks ahead of the change and in the interior, representing some scorching surface temperatures. Now here is the visible. Look ahead of the change and you can see the smoke picking up as the northwesterlies increase. The plume of smoke and cloud progresses from the Sir Ivan fire towards the coast. This gives an idea of the huge scale of this fire, but let's zoom in and take a closer look at this beast of a fire storm. At this zoom, the plume can be seen to thicken rapidly and the winds pick up and fan the fire. You can also see the brighter spots and these are where the fire plume has become a cloud as we saw in the photograph earlier. Zooming in even further shows more of the structure of the pyrocumulonimbus cloud, but at this point we're at the limits of what the Hinawari satellite can resolve. At the end of this loop you can spot the large shadow on the smoke from the pyrocumulonimbus cloud top. To get an idea of the depth of the clouds, we can look at the infrared imagery. The cloud top looks to have a temperature of minus 55 Celsius, which at a rough guess would put the cloud top at about 20, 12 kilometers altitude or more. Now this was, was this really a thunderstorm? Question mark. Well, this product from WeatherZone also plots the locations of lightning strikes and it shows that lightning strikes appear at the same time as the pyrocumulonimbus cloud reaches its greatest heights. The other thing to notice is a black hole to the left of the cloud plume. Well, that marks temperatures that have gone off the scale of this infrared image. Yes, that's right, the black hole is the fire itself, which would have temperatures well beyond the 60 Celsius limit on the temperature scale. The great thing here is that we know there was lightning not only because of this data, but because a photographer, Carolyn Healy, actually got pictures of it. It's just brilliant. Track her down and her pictures online. Perhaps there are better resolutions uh, available. 
What happened next was that the fire was hit by the cold change, and this is also clearly visible in the satellite imagery. First notice the wispy high clouds moving up from the south, and then the low level smoke rapidly changes direction and starts moving off to the northeast as the change hits. It also appears to get completely disconnected from its cloud plume. Another way to view the fires is through the weather radar. Uh, that's right, the weather radar does not only show us where it's raining, but can pick up other things like smoke, chaff, even swarms of insects or flocks of birds that will bounce the microwave radiation pulses back to the radar tower. First of all, the radar signal is weak, but as the winds fuel the fire, the signal picks up. Then as the thunderstorm from the fire plume develops, a larger signal develops. Now note what happens when the change arrives and the winds shift to a more southerly direction. The fire plume itself can be seen to shift direction to a more northeastward moving plume. This must have been a sharp change in direction uh, of the fire movement, although I'm sure the firefighters were well prepared for it. Zooming in a bit, now the boundary that marks the cold change is actually captured by the, the radar, and I've uh, labeled it with a red arrow. If you're wondering what it actually looks like when a cold change hits a large bushfire, this is a short segment of our time lapses of a cold change hitting the Mount Bolton bushfire in early 2016. Finally, let's wrap this up with some of the most detailed images that come from the polar orbiting satellites. These satellites orbit closer to Earth than the standard satellites, the geostationary ones, and provide a more detailed snapshot imagery. That is, for a particular time, so no animations, unfortunately, as these satellites are continually moving to another area as they orbit. First is this image that I showed in the previous video from 11th of February. It shows that the Sir Ivan fire was already burning and producing a pocket of smoke visible from space. The weak winds on this day meant that the smoke is not spreading far from the fire source. And moving on to the 12th of February, there were two passes from the satellites. The first is from the Terra satellite, and it shows a modest smoke plume coming from the Sir Ivan fire. But now, as we move to the next image, it came from the Aqua satellite, and it shows a massive increase in the plume spreading to the coast and beyond. It also shows some of those popcorn-y pyro clouds. This is really a sign of the effect of that, the strengthening winds uh, picking up the fire. And that's all I have for the moment. Thanks for watching and uh, catch you in the next one.